a guide to developing a trading system. Most of the days I'm long, she's short. We offset each other, we make no money. Your performance goes up tremendously. Sure, better, absolutely. You're paying a lot of attention right now to the falls. My favorite one is the next one. <laughs> and I do like misunderstood. You see if it works, if it works, they're candidates. <laughs> I always say to, to, to the people that I teach. It's clearly an important, you know, decision process. Less chance you have of it working. Turns out that profits alone are just fine. Different sides of the game. The ones that perform the best are the candidates. That doesn't matter. <laughs> so my concern is why do these people think they have to invest all of their money? Uh, all over. <laughs> Family business. <laughs> Like in 2000, let's say we'll take 2008, right? Where they, the year basically was one of my favorite year. I made the most money because I love to short. 80% of my trades are short. You know, I'm just yeah. panic. That's my wife is yeah. too. Perfect. She's a floor Perfect. trader. She's Perfect. short. The wife is a separate question because it's a big deal. So yes. it Most of the days I'm long, she's short. We offset each other. We make no money. <laughs> Family business. You know, in a, in, a, in a Jewish business, they call Jewish business when you take money from all pockets. <laughs> Much the same thing. So yes. Let's say in 2008, what worked out for you? In 2008, arbitrage was, was the best. If you were hedged, naturally hedged in the market because you were long short, you offset most things. And, and I do like arbitrage but I'm much more realistic about the risks right, of, course. Uh, of them. I like pairs trading, for example, uh, and I'll make a portfolio of pairs trading. When you're talking and, about the pair trading, you're talking about the same stocks in the, in the same industry. Yes, or, yes, Europe. except I'll do it in futures also. I'll do it with U.S. interest rates versus European interest rates. I'll do it in the energy market. Um, in related stuff, it's much more profitable in futures because you have much more leverage. Yeah, but the arbitrage right now these days, uh, well, most of it comes to the HFT because the speeds are, you know, so fast there, you know, just with the regular arbitrage, whatever works. 10, 15 years ago, it's not that easy anymore these days. Yeah, well, my, my time frame for that is still Three to, five days. Three, three to five days and and so it's i'm not competing with high frequency trading or a, so you'll, a lot you'll take let's say you'll take the oil or you take reeds real estate investment trust you just figure out uh whatever went up too much or whatever went down too much and you try to build a pair yeah you have to look for for a um better uh, i mean you have to look for things that work and there are different there are different ways. There are some very sophisticated mathematical ways to judge whether these two items are candidates for this arbitrage. I don't think that's necessary at all. I think you you logically pick some things. You see if it works. If it works, they're candidates. <laughs> you know, it's it's whether it works or not that that's the ultimate test for this. Not whether or not they mathematically cross each other enough times you know, co-integration. Uh, a lot of times, uh, uh, a few friends of mine, they built the system, they live in Israel. Uh, they said big hello to you, by the way. Uh, they uh, are building a system uh, where they have uh, a physical rules, for example, if there's one pair, 10 days going up, it's going to continue to go up. That's what they try to, th to figure it out, you know, the, the rules of physics. Well, some markets like the VIX, are more likely to continue than reverse. So in case of the VIX, you have what's what we used to call a high momentum system. When it goes to, when it becomes strong, it continues that for a few days. Right. And you can capture that. So in that That's sense, momentum. yeah, so in that sense, I do trade that and it's almost the opposite of the three day pattern that we were talking about. So when it, when it moves two, three days, I go in the direction that it's going rather than assume it's going to reverse. And of course, the VIX is heavily biased towards selling. Correct. So, Big time. Yes. A few days, uh, last, last week, when the market went down, the VIX went up almost 40%. A few days. Yes. Yes. Uh, it, uh, okay. Um, by the way, there is another system that, that I like, which tries to identify um, um, 
sharp bottoms in the market, like blow off bottoms, with a combination of trend and high volume and and oversold. And and it tends to be highly reliable. And I I pub I think I wrote about it in some magazine. But you but you were saying oversold? Uh, you were talking about the indicators, the which is those? Well, the price would be oversold using like a stochastic, stochastic. or something like that. And I think I wrote about it, and I, it's it's one of the few things that actually uses volume. Because very few things, very few systems use volume. You know what I use, uh, so I need your opinion on it as well. I always say to, to, to the people that I teach that uh, most of the moves, they begin and end with a false breakout. It could. You just told me in the beginning of the conversation that you're paying a lot of attention right now to the falls. In high frequency trading, you know, you have a real tight range for a while and then you get a little blip up and that's like somebody buying to test the market and then blunk. I always, you know, there's a, 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 a next time when we're going to have a professional conversation, not on camera, <laughs> but my system. I'll show you there's a, a few little hints uh, uh, that I identify if it's going to really it's going to continue to go or it's going to be a, a false breakout i'll show you like that oh, that would be interesting because it's clearly an important you know decision process yeah you have to figure out how we get into the range how fast we go what's the atr i mean what's the bars and everything else so the, the next question is you are the basically uh, you said before you're the index developer how did you develop the index what it takes you what did you put into it what proportion and all the details? I, I'm not sure that that was clear. Um, in, you were saying an index. Um, I've done... Maybe it's like an index font or something. Um, because it's in your Wikipedia, it says index developer. If it's I'm, the, no, I, we can, we can <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, I'm not sure. I did show recently that if you wanted to um, trade an ETF, uh, like a sector ETF, if you, if you took the ten largest stocks, mm -hmm. you would do much, much better. Of course, than ETF the, itself. Yeah, because in as with portfolios which could be over diversified i believe portfolios should not be over diversified that, that's yeah i always if, if you would see my classes i always mention you your numbers yeah. and everything and i always say one thing you were saying that over diversification is the is the mother of enemies that's what it, i always say the same when it's, it's not too much it's you know think about it think about portfolio construction most of the ctas that have lots of money try to diversify into as many things as possible. When you do that, you start to introduce marginal profits and marginal returns and more risk. When I started doing stocks about 15 years ago, I moved from futures to start applying stocks. Mm -hmm. It was a real interesting problem because now I have 2,000, 4,000 stocks and I only have enough money to trade 10 or 20 or 30 with a big enough position for whatever. And so now you have to figure out how do you pick out of 4,000 stocks, which right. ones you want to trade. Of and so the way you do it is on, on how the system, how the stock performs on your system. The ones that perform the best are the candidates. When you're saying the one of the perform the best, you're talking about from a only, history. Only, yes, historic profits only. If you start saying profits plus risk plus the number of trades, the more qualifications you put on it, the, the less it less chance you have of it working. Turns out that profits alone are just fine. So basically you're just saying that in the last five years the stock give the most money, that's the, the one I'm going to trade. Right, but my time frame shorter than that. I'll use um, three months and one year. So basically you don't go too far into the history. Be because because oh, market, market has changed here i agree with you 100 percent. yes don't go that deep. markets that stocks that used to go sideways all of a sudden start to move because of something and you want to you want to participate in them so you do that and then you rank you rank them you pick off the 10 or 20 best ones that you want and and when they fall out of that ranking you replace them with something else now 
I then went back and, and I did that in futures. And because we used to have well diversified portfolios. And the fact is, if you can just eliminate from your portfolio a few futures markets that don't work well, your performance goes up tremendously. Sure, much Absolutely. So all you have to do is concentrate on on looking and saying which one of these things I'm trading is not doing well. Of course, sometimes when and you well diversify uh, this uh, fewer uh, stocks or futures, they bring your performance down yeah. big time. Yeah, so, so my concern is why do these people think they have to invest all of their money uh, all over it, if they're investing in something that is not giving them the right return? It's better to put that extra money in interest rates and have a higher performance on the money you have invested some of the people they basically uh care a lot about the drawdowns and you know they're saying uh, diversifications smoothen the drawdowns not always yes but adding a 64th item to your portfolio in these big funds makes no difference whatsoever and and they'll find that the benefit of trading less but trading better is gigantic and it doesn't it's not hard just to eliminate just if you have 60 markets you must be able to eliminate five of them. You eliminate five markets that are performing badly, your returns are better. So I'd rather trade 20 good markets than 60 mediocre ones. So let's talk about your wife. <laughs> okay, My, she, she was on the floor of the CME for 25 years. You married? Uh, we're only married uh, 20 years but we met and we've known each other professionally since 1971 so the year i was born <laughs> so yes it took us a while to get to, we had to go through a few other relationships and we finally found that we had a lot in common i just leave it so she started as a floor trader yes yes and the she, chicago board what did she she trade? started when when gold Came. She was there a little before when gold started to be listed. She started trading currencies and then eventually the S&P and things she like that. She worked for the company uh, as a floor trader. No, she, she was a member. member. She was a member. Yes. So, and she traded herself and a book as well. And then uh, when the, uh, and then she went off the floor in the nineties and she, uh, do, did you hear of the ISE, the International Securities Exchange? They were the first automated options exchange. 90s. In, yes, they came in in the late 90s. They went public uh, shortly after. ISE. ISE, not ICE. No, I uh, not ICE, yeah. This was options. They forced the Chicago Board Options Exchange to lower their prices and become automated mm -hmm. because they couldn't compete. The ISE was doing so much better. And she became a, a managing director of, uh, or I'm not a managing director, but a director, head of compensation, head of a, a number of things there. And, and she took it all the way from when it went public to when it was sold to the Deutsche Börse 10 years later and went private. It was, it was a Harvard Business School classic example of what to do with a company from, from founding it to going public to building it, to selling it. I, how basically, it, it's very hard sometimes when a husband and wife, two professionals, uh, uh, by the different sides of the game. So, you know, how you get uh, the loan? She's a better business person. Um, and she's a good trader, but she's only short. <laughs> As a floor she's trader, short. she can't stand going long. She loves going short. So she thinks, thinks the market's gonna crash any moment. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's good if she makes money, so she's right. She she knows how to manage risk. That which was the most important thing. Which is, you know, you survive as a floor trader, you have to manage risk. But um, but she is a much better business person than I am. I'm more involved with the strategies and, you know, I I I like opportunities, but, but she will sort through them and say, I like, and, and she'll veto things where she doesn't like the person. You know, she she trades right now. Yes, she and our daughter have a trading room set up in in the house in Chicago. 
the past. So as far as I understand, you live six months a year in Chicago and six months in Bahamas. Three in Chicago and nine in the Bahamas. Why Bahamas? I love Bahamas. Well, we used to live in Bermuda. Uh, when that's where the uh, oil company was, I was with in the 80s and 90s. And then I left and we, we retired to Vermont. And that was nice. But looking for signs of intelligent life became difficult. Uh, so your daughter is a trader as well? Our daughter is a trader. Uh, or so. She, yes, yeah, she just trades. She trades money that was financed by us. That doesn't matter. <laughs> like, any, like any responsible child. Good. good. She's she's not losing money. <laughs> she's still at early stages. How old is she? Is? She uh, doesn't mind. Fifty-two, but she tried other things. She had a trucking company, uh, and she finally decided that every every business has its problems, and and that she enjoyed trading when she was younger, and her mother spent some time working with her, and now they spend time together. Like these three months, they'll work together. Uh, in this office, and then she'll be more or less on her own, except I guess her mother and she, even when we're in the Bahamas, spend a lot of time on the telephone. All right. Now, before we go to your books, very uh, serious question from a very serious person who is basically a big fan of yours. Okay. Uh, it's about uh, empiricism. It's the practical approach to a problem. <laughs> yes. In the last 70 years, the technological progress basically is much faster grown than the progress of human nature, by far. The technology, we're the people, we're not like, a, you know, we don't have any progress, pretty much. We walked 100 years ago, we're still walking right now. <laughs> but in the technological, so the, in, in uh, empiricism, it says, uh, why is that? Why the technological process is what? Well? Because uh, the reason is it's a total denial of uh, uh, empiricism. So example is, if we saw the sunset in the past, we're saying that in the future, we're going to see the sunset again. Okay. Uh, if it's in trading, we're saying uh, if the pattern worked before, we should see that pattern work in the future. If uh, empiricism empirical is a false of obtaining a knowledge, that's what the well understanding history is always important so from that sense it's true and some things continue to work and some things don't continue whereas i don't completely agree with it you have to think about it as whether they're temporary or structural changes in in life and in the markets and i believe some of these are structural changes and that that when something structurally changes, they can't come back to the original state or they can't repeat what was once there. It's, in some ways, you have to think about trend following. The same long-term trends still work, but they don't make as much money because of the noise in the market. Right. It takes longer to identify when the trend starts and when it ends. So you have the same underlying concept still is okay but but something structurally has changed which makes it impossible to make the same amount of money from it i i don't know if that no no i just approaches I just the, he was yeah, a, yes this three this three-day trade still works yes for 50 years it does so you know every i think people do have an obligation to learn learn about what works and what doesn't and, and and the past and how the market is changing if you understand how the market is changing you may be able to preempt some of this right. and have systems that will work in a timely fashion so you uh wrote a lot of books so it seems <laughs> well, yes i have uh the question is uh, do you have your favorite ones out of all of them and why my favorite one is the next one <laughs> i wrote this little book and published this little book called uh, a guide to developing a trading system recently and it's short and i did it from the questions that people ask me when i 
when I gave lectures, seminars, right. because I said, this is what people really want to know. So you put it in that book. So I kept track of them and I wrote them up and I put them in some coherent way. Uh, and, and in some ways it was sharing the best knowledge that I have. So I published that and I was all done. And then I sat down and said, God, this is missing a lot of stuff. So and, it's and, going to be an expedition. And so it was the, the first book was a small format, 175 pages. I've rewritten it. It's now a large format, 600 pages. <laughs> and it's all ready to go. But the publisher doesn't want to publish it too soon after the first one. Oh, it's got to be. A, uh... And because of that, as time goes on, I'm adding a little this and a little that. But, but I really believe what I'm trying to do is show people how to develop a trading system and what the important parts are and where the problems are that they're going right. to have and give them lots of ex the new one has lots of examples of how to do it and the, and the kind of problems Practice. and what works and yeah. Practice. Yeah. And a lot of charts and oh, I love it. Things like that. For me, you know, I'm a, I'm a more visual guy. You yeah. know, when I look, I uh, understand and uh, absorb the material when I see it. You know, when I see charts and explanation, for me, it's much easier to absorb. Yeah. Any, anyway, I just, it's one of these things where you go back and you reflect on what you've done and you said, I could have done better on this. But this book, of course, has, has helped my career a lot. When I first started it and published the first one in 1978, I had to write all the material myself because there wasn't any material out there. Right. And I did it because I felt that the futures industry was greatly um, misunderstood. And they thought it was all these wheeler dealers and people right. taking, taking advantage of things. And in some ways it was, but there was still an underlying group of people that were really trying to understand the market. And so I did a lot of the work myself and published it. There. Since then, I could draw another material, but I keep putting more and more new stuff in it. So this is a, you always have a core and you just add to the core. Yes. Well, as I said, the, the real problem for the next edition is going to be, what do I remove? Because I don't want it to be, it out. yeah, I'd like it to be a little smaller. And I have to make this decision about what historic things should be in there that don't actually work, but, but offer a perspective. And I don't know. And we'll go to the last question there. Average day for Perry Kaufman. Oh. <laughs> Average day, I get up at uh, 4.30 in the morning. Why 4.30? I deal with Asia and Europe. And I can still catch Asia while at the end of the day and chat. Not every, I don't need to every day. Uh, more often I speak uh, to a company I work with in uh, Hamburg and a friend in uh, Munich. Uh, and and then I look at what I might do during the day, uh, review things, just, and then I go for, my, for a long walk. I, I mean, reasonably long walks, three miles, fairly, fairly fast. So, um, and, and sometimes I play tennis before the market opens. That's the average day. Yeah, and then I work till the market closes, and then we have cocktails on the patio. Just enjoy this. With, with friends. It's a long enough day, you know, and sometimes I work in the evening. If I'm writing a new book, I usually work at it two or three hours a day. Often it's in the morning. So, as you get older, you're more productive in the morning. So. Great. Uh, it's been a, a real pleasure, you know, I ask oh. all the questions I wanted to ask. You know, Alex, it's, it's been my pleasure. It's uh, I hope, I hope, you a, know, a privilege meeting you. Interesting for you. Yes, it is. Very interesting. And as I said, once we're going to develop the system, you, I'm going to show you right away. So we'll see what we can do together. And I'm happy to stay in touch and share some of my stuff with you. I would love it.